Hello friends, I am Jayesh Gandhi and I am going to talk about 8051 ports today. 8051 has got 4 8-bit ports namely port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3. Each port is associated with a register popularly called as SFR in 8051. SFR are special function registers. The registers which are associated with the port they manage the port activities. Port 0 is associated with a register having address 80H. Port 1 is associated with 90H. Port 2 is associated with A0H and Port 3 is associated with B0H. With the help of each of these ports the 8051 interacts with the world and therefore it has got 32 pins through which it interacts with the world. All these ports are also bit addressable. That means you can set or reset each bit of the port. The bit addresses of these ports are shown over here. Port 0 bit address P0.0, 80H, P0.1, 81H and so on P0.7 it is 87H. If we take port 1 then P1.0 it is 90H P1.1 it is 91H and so on P1.7 it is 97H. Similarly we have port 2 from A0 to A7H and port 3 from B0 to B7H. Let us try to understand these ports in more detail by looking at the logic diagram of these ports. As you can see the logic diagram has got three main components the D latch, the output buffer and the two tri-state buffers. Let us see how the 8051 ports are managed by this logic diagram. The port 1 and port 2 and port 3 they have this particular logic diagram but if we talk about port 0 then the internal pull up resistance is not present and therefore whenever you use port 0 then we have to use the external pull up resistance. Let us see how we can write onto this latch. The process of writing is fairly simple. You write the value to the D latch through the internal CPU bus and then clock it so that the value is latched inside the D latch. Say for example we want to write a 0 onto this D latch then give an input 0 through the internal CPU bus and then provide a clock signal which will latch this value and the output of the port will become 0. Now here the circuit has an interesting feature that the output of the port Q is 0 and therefore Q bar is 1 and this Q bar drives the output buffer. This one on Q bar switches on the transistor that is the field effect transistor present inside which pulls down the pin to zero because when the transistor conducts when it is on the current will flow through it and the output voltage will go to zero. Now let us see how we can write a one on this particular latch. The process is same give a 1, clock it, you get output as 1, you get Q bar as 0, this is important, this puts the transistor in off state, there is an internal pull up load inside the 8051 which will pull this pin to VCC and the output will be 1. Now this is a very interesting feature because when the transistor goes off then the internal load of the 8051 pulls up the pin to 1. It is well known that for 8051 when you want to use this port as an input pin then you have to write a 1 on this port and then you can use this pin as an input pin. The reasons are obvious let us see it once again. When you write a 1 on this port the Q bar will be 0, the transistor is off, the output of the port is 1 which is pulled up to 1 by the internal pull up resistance. But since the transistor is off you find that no path is provided to ground inside the circuit and therefore 
with the help of an external signal external input you can easily pull down this value to zero and this one or a zero will go into the read pin that is the tri state buffer which is driven by the read pin value and as a result you will get the pin value of on the internal cpu bus now the read operation of 8051 is a very typical operation where we find that you can either read the latch or you can read the port pin now this is an interesting feature of 8051 if we read the latch the tri state buffer related to the latch will put the data on the internal cpu bus if we read the pin then the tri state buffer will put the pin data on the, the cpu internal bus so these two tri state buffers play an important role in switching either the pin data to the internal bus or the latch data on to the internal bus and this provides a very interesting uh, programming technique in 8051 which we will see very shortly now in this table you can see that the instructions corresponding to reading the status of the input port that is the pins are shown over here you find that the pin data is read by the instruction and then processed say for example the first instruction move a comma p1 the value of p1 that is the port 1 that is the pins of port 1 are put into register a when we test the bit jump if not bit then the pin of port 1.2 is tested and if its value is 1 then the jump is not executed if its value is 0 the jump is executed the reverse for jump if bit move a particular bit to the carry bit and then compare a port with register a all these instructions will read the port pins that is the status of the port and process the values it is very interesting to note that the values of the port are only read into the processor the second group of instruction has all got a typical job of read modify and write in the previous case we only read the values into the processor while here read modify and write the value majority of the instructions are logical instructions arithmetic instructions increment and decrement type of instructions so when you write down anl p1 comma a that means and the value of port 1 with a and put the result in port 1 this instruction will not read the port 1 pin values i repeat this instructions will not read the port pin values they will read the port latch values the output of the d flip flop and these values will go into the processor they will be modified by some logical or some other type of operation and again the modified values are written on to the port latch which will of course modify the port pin values so this is an important aspect of 8051 processor where we have a group of instructions which will read modify and write so when there is a read modify and write it is the port register which is read the d flip flop which is read and not the port pin so that is all about the 8051 ports i hope you have enjoyed thank you